Hello and welcome to this PS Trace tutorial video. Today I will talk about the corrosion mode of PS Trace. That is a part of the software that's tailored towards the corrosion community and it should help you to make your tafel analysis quickly. So let's have a look in PS Trace. I already lo loaded here a polarization curve. So if you want to know how to switch to corrosion mode, just go to the top left and you can change the mode there. We have the scientific mode where basically all features are available. We have the analytical mode that's made to help you in an automated way to perform standard addition and calibration curve calculations. Um, we have a separate video for that, by the way. Uh, and then we have the corrosion mode that should help you if you're doing, well, corrosion related research and measurements. Three things happen when you change to corrosion mode. There are, there's one, two tabs that appear and the names of many techniques change. The corrosion community is very interdisciplinary and has developed kind of its own language compared to classic electrochemistry or people coming from electroanalysis. So we have changed a few of the names of the techniques so that people from the corrosion community should have it easier to recognize what they do. For example, linear polarization instead of linear sweep voltammetry. This techniques most of the time still do exactly the same thing. Another thing that popped up is this tab. And here you can, before the measurement, enter the parameters that well, are not measured by the software, but that you would need to enter. The real surface area, the equivalent weight, that means how much grams are dissolved per mole of electrons that run through your material. The density of your material. And then we have the two tafel slopes or tafel constants. These, of course, you would have to either know from the literature or from previous measurements if you want to put them here. But they're not necessary for all the analysis. Well, as I said, sometimes you start with nothing. Right, so now we have done our polarization curve. And most people who do a polarization curve like to look at it in a slightly different way. I mean, one option is just to turn on the logarithmic scale and then you already see here the current in logarithmic scale versus the potential and that looks a bit more familiar already. However, if you go to the corrosion tab while you have a linear polarization curve as your active curve, then you immediately transfer that into a tafel plot with the potential plotted versus the logarithm of the current density. The current density is just calculated by dividing the current by the um, surface area that you put here into these fields. If you found that you made a mistake, just correct it here and update your calculations. By the way, if you have questions, always feel free to use the question mark buttons to open the help pages for the different techniques. So let's first stick with the, let's say, classic tafel plot and see how we can do an analysis with them. Well, when you open it, automatically you will run a Butler Former fit and the software will try to find the borders for your fit, so the values that are fitted for you. So you see here these two triangles and between these two triangles all the values are used for the butler fulmer fit. From the butler fulmer fit we then derive the corrosion potential, the corrosion current, then the corrosion current per surface area, so then that again uses a value from that you have entered previously, right, not purely from the measurement. It also gets the uh, tafel constants and it calculates the corrosion rate in millimeter per year and for that it needs all these parameters, so these would have need to be entered correctly. So sometimes the software might not be able to recognize for you what are the right borders for the plot fit. So you can also do a manual Butler former fit. So then you just, uh, well, select the option and then you mark two points. Maybe you want to have like a very wide area fitted and then it makes the fit between these two points. If you feel very secure in tafel analysis and you want to do it the old fashioned way, by finding the tafel slopes, you can also do that. So you choose manual tafel slope fit and then you make points to find the right um, slopes to get to your tafel plot. I'm now trying to do it properly, but you see it's a bit of a challenge. 
um, and when you have found your linear parts of the curve and assigned them for the anodic and cathodic linear relationship, then you can confirm this. And now you get here under Tafel Slopes Manual, you get here the results from that. If you want to transfer your results, for example, to your lab books, you can copy them to the clipboard. What are other options you can find here? If you're not used to seeing potential versus the logarithm of the current density, that can sometimes be confusing. So you can just push the switch Tafel plot axis button and then you see now the current versus the potential. So you can just switch these axes around. Further plotting possibilities are available here as well. So you can go without the current density, but directly with the current, or you can actually just have the current density over potential and you see basically the polarization curve again. Okay, so this is it for polarization curves. Another thing you can do as well is to use impedance spectra. I loaded now an impedance spectra. This was made with a dummy cell, so no surprise, it's a super nice semicircle. But just to point out, in the corrosion tab, when you have impedance spectroscopy as the active curve, you can, in the corrosion plot, make a fit for your measurement and extract, for example, according to this equivalent circuit, your polarization resistance. In the corrosion mode, we have a few corrosion model equivalent circuits already made for you, describing different situations. For example, the ideal organic coating, where you just have solution resistance and the coating capacitance, for example. But also still, you have the option available to make your own equivalent circuit, if this is what you want to do. Uh, this is everything that I wanted to tell you about the corrosion mode to get you started. Of course, more details you can explore by yourself. And if you found that video helpful, you can find more of our PS Trace tutorials on YouTube. And if you subscribe, you won't miss any new videos. Also, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you will see all the updates we post and not miss anything. Thanks for watching and have a great day.